Hello guys, today we start with a whiteboard session, a whiteboard session about load balancing. Load balancing is a very basic functionality of a net scaler. So I did a drawing, I painted a client, a net scaler, and three load, physical servers. So this is, they have IP addresses of course. Now the first identity inside of my net scaler, the first thing I have to paint into my net scaler is the load balancing virtual server. Load balancing virtual server is a thing the client will connect to. So this is a virtual server, load balancing v server. And of course, this v server got a virtual IP address. So the client is able to connect to it. Next, it needed to draw will be the services. Now the services. Uh, it in it is that know about protocols we are using. So this will be HTTP services, load balancing services. And the last identity is the server object. Don't mix up the server object with the load balancing server, V servers. So these are server objects. The server object, uh, the property of the server object is the IP address of the physical server. So they got the IP address and they point to the physical servers. Now what's the property of the service? The property of the service basically is uh, the protocol and the port. So HTTP port 80 and a TCP port 80 and HTTP protocol. For all of them the same. And the last one is the load balancing V server. Load balancing V server of course got the virtual IP address and again a port, TCP port 80 and a protocol HTTP. Now the client will connect to the virtual IP address. A load balancing server will do a load balancing decision. We will go into this and select one of the services. The services points to server and so the user will see data. Let's click into my lab environment and set it up. Now the first thing I have to do is I click on traffic management and enable the feature for load balancing. All Netscaler features have to be enabled to work, or they are just simply skipped. So load balancing is enabled. I click on servers. I start from backside, so I create the servers. First of all, the red server. Give it an IP address. Create, finished. I will do the same with the green server. B address. Create, and the blue one. I would suggest you think of a naming scheme. You don't need to go with mine, but keep this naming scheme or you will be confused very quite soon. Created. Now, the next identity to create is the services. So I will click on services and create a service, a new service. So this will be the red service. Use an existing server, the red one of course, create it. Do the same thing to the green existing server create and of course to the blue one go 
go back and see all my servers appear to be up and this means the physical servers are working. Next identity, the virtual servers. My virtual server got a name of course. Protocol and IP address. Port and OK. I will have to bind my services to it. All of them bind it. Uh, that's it. Go back. They appear to be down, but this is not true. Refresh and they will be up. So that's nice. I will surf to my server. Refresh so it's green, red, and blue. So my services are load balanced. Now there's another method to do this. I personally prefer the other method. First of all, it's less work to do and the chance for misconfiguration is smaller. I use to create service group instead of services. So I will create a new service group, give it a name, protocol would be HTTP, some more properties, we don't go into this, click OK. Bind members to it. Already have this members set up. My three servers. Select them and uh, specify a port, port 80. Create. OK. This is exactly the same thing, the same results. We will be able to load balance. So it is up. My server needs to get the service groups bound to it. Refresh my server. Green, red, blue. It's more or less a matter of taste. 